Hello guys, it's been quite a while since I haven't made a video, so I just like want to apologize a bit. I haven't been so dedicated with making this video, it's because oh, a personal crisis. Wow, well, uh, around a month ago, I was unfortunately, unfortunately, unfortunately hospitalized. Not for Corona though. Um, I was sustained with a hideous injury. So after that's gone aside, I will keep the happy mood. We got new games, and I'm going to be talking about Naughty Dog. And this is how we sing things. Naughty Dog was one of the dearest videos in my heart. However. Over time, due to establishment politics, private politics, American politics, and racial signaling, gender politics, has accumulated to the point that the sequel of Last of Us Part 2 has become a massive elephant in the room as you, my beautiful people, listeners, have known. It's a massive detriment that this, this word has, since lockdown of coronavirus, I just realized how altruistic people are nowadays. How altruistic are uh, corporate overloads are. Yeah, but I heard you right. Altruistic. Why? Well, they prepared us for a great delay as well as hype. Altruistic hype. They used to be the best. And I'm not directly aiming at this at Snowtip, but I'm going to take it hard with Sony. Sony has been under fire recently for altruistically investigating the Naughty Dog situation, so they should have in film and in practice, it's a dirty song that the Kenyan knows out of this movie so that they can save faith somehow. But what they did literally is, my friend, doing an absolute oopsie. And if you guys know what an absolute oopsie I'm talking about, is having Jason Schreier saying, Oh, this investigation that Sony has been done into the investigation of Luchi Dog has found out the results that the leaker has no association with Luchi Dogs. Oh, Sony! So it's a, not even an employee of Sony, not even an ex employee, it's a third or something third way contractor wow i think you you mean by third way uh, third way feminist critique person i think they were saying third way feminist critique i think but i'm just going to say this to you drunko man has been the most altruistic guy who has been a feminist and powerless this a apology. You know why? Why putting out a little bit? Because a and we have now already heard the other people I found the most convenient of sparking another debate, another war against gamers, sparking another war against gamers. This time against especially game designers and stories. Well, Drunkle Man traded a little 
shield that is just like the um sports K9 guys. He did a movie back then talking about family's frequency, I think a few years ago, you know. He was uh, about how he despised sexualizing female characters. Oh, the dreaded notion of sexualizing female characters is hurt, you know, yes, yes. And how he's done that, all he's done is being a feminist apologist. Well, a radical feminist apologist is the case that he's being altruistic. Altruistic to the fact, trying to well, technically, Bronco Man, you don't have to be unrealistic at all because Last of Us has always been a perfect game. What you have done in the first, in the sequel, the part two, you see the matches, this including the haters of Last of Us Part One. A massive gives us a massive retcon in the form of mouth and carry writing. And I'm calling it mouth and carry writing. You know why? Because I'm so fascinated by how in especially in games and animation how these three chaps like have the same and similar logic of thinking about how to portray female female characters while portraying the male counterparts as well in the best case of sense lateral for the female characters. Well the female badassery characters so that lateral of the male the male lateral characters supporting the strong female character. Yeah. This is why I despise in this industry this over saturation over saturation of the need for oh more great female models because we want more female game developers in this utter nonsense. If I want to learn to games design Games design is not that simple It's not just a story thing It's about It's about harmonizing It's about balancing the, the power strength Whatever I have realized that The gaming The triple A gaming industry Including Naughty Dog We cannot trust these corporate entities Alongside arrogant Sony who thinks that he, they can just get away with it with giving money to well-known buying out well-known journalists and contractors to, and including YouTube um, voices and celebrities that games are here to stay as woke agenda it's disgusting it's not really disgusting it's do a massive disservice to the gamers and the game designers. The game designers, I'll say this, have no con no control over this agenda. Whatever agenda they're pushing, they're losing, but they're still pushing it because they see a valuable gain yet. And I think I don't want to be conspiratorial here, but the loss of us is here to stay as a feminist trope of how to destroy um so how, how to inverse apocalypse societies with ellie being a boy like um, a lesbian for uh, for uh, for for its own employees like if i remember the so-called the jewish girl no offense to her but that jewish character was inserted into the game due to being a uh, valuable employee okay but first of all doesn't that self-insertion means a disruption to the entire game's narrative dynamics or in this one case the premise of the entire game which finished with the first game 
so let's recap what happened in the first game. Joe and Ellie escape to find a cure or find a better future. And they come across and been ambushed by the fireflies. And they were on route to find the fireflies. So they were ambushed and yeah, so Ellie was unfortunately in a coma and Joe wanted to save her but instead was denied it due to the fireflies wanted to experiment on Ellie in order to find a cure or a vaccine. So what happened guys? So what happened do you think? Lex, did he shoot, did he proceed with and become a lazy bum of a protagonist and leave it to it? No! Joe didn't want to lose another daughter like hers, which he, he in the first game, we see him coping with the loss of his own daughter, so he didn't want to lose Ellie, so he did what, uh, uh, what the most virtuous, most selfless act of altruism was to save Ellie from the brutal experimentation that would have before her. This is what the biggest problem we have with uh, the detractors of the Last of Us. They say, well, well, Jew is a villain, uh, according to it's uh, narratively consistent because Jew is a villain in the sense that he lied to Ellie. Do you not understand if he saw, said the truth, told the truth to Ellie, Ellie would not would go back and show herself even in more greater danger. There will break the bond between Joe and Ellie. So that is a massive retcon. So I have no idea what what, what would this so-called self-professed fans of Oh, Last of Us, um, some of them still defend Lochi Dog's decisions for Last of Us Part 2. I have no idea why. They're still, they're still woeful minority, so that's the thing. But aside that, I am so shockingly disgusted how Game Academic, especially Anita Sakizi, yes, she, yes, she's a Game Academic because she has be recognized by UC Berkeley, Los Angeles Uni, and yes, and she has written academic blogs regarding video game design. That's that's clear enough that she's a freaking academic. It's being I'm being sarcastic though, but yeah, she's a media critic and not a worry competent. One. So that's the massive flaw with her. But unfortunately, as you can know, everyone. We need to be vigilant about how Sony can take the advantage of its loyal fans and place them under Oh, we have a trance and the, the game is still going to be massively great. It might be great. But I also horror. So this is why like I don't have the evidence that we can still have to see this point everyone. I had zero footage of The Last of Us Part 2 because you guys have already seen it. If I had it in footage, I would be in direct violation of what Logi Dog and in direct violation of Sony's copyright infringement. So I'm not going to do that. So, I didn't even that. so what's my own perspective on Last of Us is that they should redo the entire game, just like how Sonic, the Sonic movie, they have redone the entire animation to save themselves from total alienation. Yes, I'm saying alienation. Because if they release this game in a such of a tragic, unfinished state, it will be a massive disservice to its fans, to its loyal customers, as well as a massive disservice to the people who paid so much attention to this game. This game was one of my childhood. One of my childhood because you know why? I I thought it was amazing. It was the best PS3 game ever. I played with my friend at his house. I fell in love with it. It was very difficult. 
but it was very rewarding at the same time. So the balance between difficulty and reward, which is the massive up. So that's all I can say. So thank you guys. So yes, and I want you to add in some more like. Sorry about this round, basically. I feel like our work is... Th this year has been a massive tragedy. 2020 has been a massive tragedy. I, I, I don't see any positives from the future, but there is altruism, right? Yes, they at least try. People try. But even if you try, you're going to fail. That's the problem with nowadays anthology and methodology. We fail because we don't have, well, not because not we are trying, it's because we failed at the preparedness and methodology. And guess what? Anita Sarkeesian was at the VNAs. She was like last year, I went to a spe specifically. Last year, oh uh, yeah, yeah, the year before as well. Um, she, there was a V in 2018. There was a VNE exhibition of um disrupt design and play, play design disrupt and play, play design disrupt. That exhibition and a VNE. I went to. I paid my actual money with it, and I was still at college. I mean sixth form. So. I was really excited with the uh, presentation, but then when I came halfway after I see through all those Overwatch and uh, those uh, gay simulator, uh, I mean bathrobe simulator game, and um, I love the game simulator anyway, so yeah, the QWOP, all those interesting mini games that was so fun. But the problem is, I saw Alita's face, not because I hate her, it's because she presented herself with the world's most condescending and most racially aggravating presentation ever. Why are video games so white? She asked the audience, literally, she presented the audience asking, why are video games so white? Why are video games so... She literally had a whole stage of a whole TV monitor presenting her feminist frequency channels about tropes of women playing and also talking about how video games are so wide and how we should encourage diversity. First of all, I do encourage diversity, but not the diversity that Anita wants. So my diversity is a balance between games regardless of the methodology and about we, our, in the next video, I will talk about how Games Academia has failed to be eloquent to send the message, clear message, to the industry and to the players that they got their backs on you. So to cover you up with enough design theories and studies and back up to show that games is on the right path and it's not hijacked by some wannabe uh, I mean gender studies and um, death of the author kind of postmodernist designer thing or, or preacher religious preacher about how games design uh, only the games gameplay are game design and rest like stories that they're, they're rubbish they're not game design they're, they're fillers yeah, so thank you guys. Thank you for listening and hope you appreciate this video.